Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Language and Life Skills. I am Matthew Adagani. Today the point of our discussion is about raising the marriage age for girls from 18 to 21. This topic of raising the marriage age for women is a hotly debated topic in parliament and in the country. And the government seems to be in a hurry to rush through this bill. What is the motive for this legislation of raising the marriage age for women? It seems to be the pursuit of gender equality. Equality between men and women in every department of life. Well, this gender equality is important in certain areas like equal pay for equal work, the openness of services in the army and in other areas both to both men and women who are qualified. In the matter of inheritance of parental property both for daughters and for sons. Now, in the matter of marriage age, this equality or this parity does not seem to be good, does not seem to be ideal. Because the developmental process of both men and women is not the same. In fact, the girls grow faster than boys. Right from early childhood, you can see that girls, uh, girl children begin to talk earlier than boys. They are better at language and they speak more words than any man on an average day. So they are good at language. Concerning the adolescents, puberty and adolescence. Girls mature earlier than boys. They begin to have the experience of puberty at the age of 10 to 11 years. Whereas for boys it is from 11 to 12 years. And they finish the process of puberty and attain maturity by the age of 15 to 17. Whereas for boys it is 16 to 17. So you can see, the girls mature faster and develop faster than boys. Biologically too, men and women are not equal, they are complementary. This complementarity must be appreciated and we should not blindly speak of equality. Men are physically unfit. To bear children and to nurture little babies, they are not equipped for it. That is the joy of motherhood, it's given only to women. So we should not look for blind equality in everything. There is complementarity in certain areas. Of course, there have been certain legislations which have been favourable to women, which have been positive in their regard. For example, even before independence, the government abolished the heinous practice of sadi, of a widow jumping into the funeral pyre of her husband, killing herself. Good, a good legislation prohibiting sadi, even in pre-independent days. And then, to combat the evil of child marriage and all is unnecessary or unhealthy consequences of child marriage like uh, sex slavery to men. There has been a legal age of marriage, age of 18. That's a reasonable limit reasonable 
age for marriage because by the age of 18 uh, women are physically mature psychologically mature apart from that women can vote as well as men at the age of 18 they can be recruited for any of the services then how is it that only for marriage they are considered children up to the age of 21 in the proposed legislation in this move towards raising the marriage of women to 21 we will land in an anomalous situation for example adultery is no more a crime in indian law for both men and women whatever their age not that it is a right but yes it has been granted as a matter of equality in doing something wrong never mind about that it is no more a crime similarly cohabitation is not a crime anymore and there, there also there is no strict legal age for cohabitation when you consider it okay up to 18 but there is no strict law even forbidding it even below 18 the living relationship so girls and boys above 18 or any age uh, they can have cohabitation uh, men and women can commit adultery it is not a crime but if you marry at 18 it will become a crime <laughs> that is something really anomalous marriage will become a crime whereas you can go scot free with cohabitation and with adultery so let me ask you and ask me why is it not advisable to marry late at the age of 21 basic reason is marriage is a personal choice by 18 women are mature girls are mature and in general the least the government interferes in family life and personal life it is the best in addition, today, many women find childbearing difficult and many marry late also for education and other reasons and they struggle to have even to have a single child and delaying the marriage will only complicate this process. Apart from this, we cannot think only of the educated and elite in the cities. There are so many women in the rural areas and for parents in the rural areas, settling their daughters in marriage is an important issue, important matter. That is why they tend to have child marriages. Of course, child marriages are wrong. But then, keeping their daughters uh, unmarried to a later age of 21 to a high age is a difficult situation for parents to face. The security of the daughters is in jeopardy in a country where there is a lot of gender violence, violence against women. So, parents feel secure if they are able to marry those their daughters at a proper age. 18 is sufficient for that. So, I would say it is better for individuals to decide whom to marry, when to marry, how many children they should have, these are better left to individuals than to be fixed by governments. Chinese uh, government has uh, burned its fingers with this one time forced one child policy, then it had to shift to two child policy, and now it has come to a three child policy. Why? Because they found there is not enough work force, working population to support the aging population. 
and all over the world population is on the decrease, including India. So it would be better to leave the marriage age at the age of 18. This is my opinion. So friends, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe. Bye. See you another day.